Welcome to the Experience of the Soul podcast with Cynthia Alice Anderson, a weekly show helping you grow, prosper, and evolve. Today, episode 309, The Thing That Matters Most. And now, Experience of the Soul. Hello and welcome to the Experience of the Soul podcast. My name is Cynthia Alice Anderson. I am the host. I'm so excited to be with you today, friends. And I'm here in my studio with my producer. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sean Kilgore. Proud to be your producer for the Experience of the Soul podcast. Happy to be here with you this morning. Today, of course, is Monday, May 20th. And today is episode 309 of Experience of the Soul. We're talking about the thing that matters most. But before we get to that, a couple things we want to talk about. Uh, we're uh, at a point now where we want to start going back to doing shout outs, which I'm super yes. excited about. So we're going to do location shout outs and we're going to do uh, social media and YouTube shout outs. Out. So this morning, we are mm -hmm. shouting out to YouTube viewer Karen Carter, uh, who has commented several times and been very, uh, you know, active and engaging on the YouTube uh, episodes. She just recently said, I now have something to look forward to listening to during my Monday lunch. I'm so glad someone introduced me to you. So thank you, Karen, for uh, for tuning in there on YouTube. We sure do appreciate having you and we are honored to support your journey. Absolutely. And whoever that friend is, make another friend and refer refer someone else because we're so proud of the work we're doing. We work very hard. And and by proud, I don't mean egotistical. I mean, <laughs> by proud, I mean, we know it's helping you and supporting your life. We're grateful for that. And it supports us. So we're really honored to support all uh, you and your friend. And all those listening around the country and even around the world. Also, I want to mention in Shawnee, Kansas, yeah. uh, I have some dear <laughs> friends in Shawnee, Kansas. So friends, I love you. I bless you. And it just does my heart good to know that you're watching. And it, it really uh, brings me a lot of joy to think that people I have known for many, many years are still uh, touching in with my ministry. And I think I, there are some new friends as well. When I think about our numbers, you know, that we're getting thousands. I just, I just feel like I know you and I feel like you uh, know me for sure. And uh, I feel that connection. So thank you friends in Shawnee, Kansas. That's a beautiful country. Yeah. And I feel uh, like if I lived uh, in Kansas, that's where I should live. Sean oh, from Shawnee, Kansas. Sean <laughs> from Shawnee. <laughs> Sean from Shawnee. Yeah. Sean from Shawnee. Yeah, that would be. Uh, with, yeah, great. with all that said, friends, we do encourage you though to uh, engage with us, reach out to us, send yeah. us a message, let us know how uh, what we're doing is working with you in your life. So you can do that a number of ways. Of course, we really encourage yeah. you to to follow Cynthia Alice Anderson on Facebook and Instagram, and also on YouTube if you're uh, if you're a regular Absolutely. listener to the show, right? To go to that YouTube page, subscribe. That way, you'll see whenever we post video podcasts, and we're putting a lot of other content out there on YouTube also. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm laughing. I was telling Sean before we came on the air, I'm surprised how me in a baseball hat is so interesting, but Hey, that's cool. Yeah. And, uh, that's the real me. I, I almost put up a video this morning of me cooking, uh, because I'm making a uh, really good soup this morning. I love, I'm going to call it recipes for the soul. My yes. little, I'll make a little cookbook and call it recipes for the and soul. Please do your best Julia child when you do it. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Well, the other thing is, you know, coming up, we're we're hoping in June to roll out our new uh, Mighty Networks, uh, our network system where you can join us, you can subscribe to be a part of our family in a different way. Uh, we we will have a free subscription, and we'll also have a way that you can pay us a nominal fee every month to get more talks and more interaction with me personally. I, I love the podcast and I love all the ways I reach people around the world, but I really love to connect with you, our listener, our viewers, so that you can uh, really begin to apply the teachings on an even deeper level. Sometimes you have a question. Sometimes you have feedback. Sometimes you are looking to apply a certain principle in a certain way. So we're going to begin to put talks out online and then have more interaction. So 
more about that coming up, but a lot of great things and your support makes it all possible. So Absolutely. So with that said, everything we do, of course, cannot be done without the support mm -hmm. of the viewers and the listeners just like you. We are still in our $9,000 in 90 day campaign. Uh, so we yes. still have that going. I think we're doing really great so far. And yes. we'll, we'll be giving you some updates here on that pretty soon. But of course, we thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for how you support us and, and our journey and how... Um, and helping us get the mess, you know, the, the message out. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, friends, you know, today is an important day with our topic. I can't believe we're already, you know, halfway through May. I'm preparing for a big trip out of town with my family every year. You know, we go up into the mountains of North Carolina, and it, it's kind of an old Southern tradition. It's interesting because. Uh, I, I guess a lot of people don't know about it. When you grow up knowing about it, you don't know who knows and who doesn't. But there, we have a family plot in the middle of the woods. It's actually called a Odd Fellows Cemetery. <laughs> and when we go to North Carolina every year, one of the things we do is clean off all the gravestones. And if there's anyone who passed, we have to add uh, a gravestone to the family plot. Uh, we do that. So, you know, after my mom passed, we did that, her sister, you know, et cetera. So we will be placing a stone this year for a dear aunt that recently made her passing in the last year. It was my mom's last sibling. So anyway, as we go up there, it's a real, it's a real special time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I would ask you to hold my family in your prayers, if you don't mind for this, because it is Memorial Day. And so it's a time of honoring, um, really honoring our ancestors and our family. And I, I, I feel so strongly about that. My work keeps me so busy and I love it, but, uh, it's really important to unplug and have really intense family time. And I'm really looking forward to that. And as I'm talking about family, you all know how much family means to me. It always has part of being a Southerner is, uh, uh, you know, really honoring your family and and uh, I've talked a lot about my journey and how family is important, but the truth is there's something even more important than family. And I want you, Sean, again, to give the title today, and I think our our friends listening will understand what I mean. So give me the title one more time. Absolutely. Today we are talking about uh, the thing that matters most, the thing yeah. that matters most. All right. The thing that matters most. So many of us, if I said, what's the most important? Well, you wouldn't say money first. The first thing you'd probably say is family. You'd say family. The, the second thing you might say is relationships. You know, my relationships are the most important and relationships are very important. Uh, interestingly, our behaviors right now, culturally, say that money is the most important. You see businesses, even individuals, companies making choices all the time that are uh, money-based and not humanity-based. You know, companies that are choosing profits over taking care of their employees. So money is important. We have to have money to live. But we know spiritually, if you've been on the spiritual journey very long, that money is certainly not the most important. So what is the, well, the thing uh, that matters most is your soul. The thing that matters most is your spiritual journey and your relationship with God. And, and here's how I know this is that every relationship you have, whether it's your relationship with yourself, uh, your relationship with life itself, your relationship with your kids, your loved ones, your partner, your spouse, all of those relationships come out of your relationship with God. In other words, how you value yourself, how you nurture your soul, how connected you are to the divine uh, really impacts your, uh, your relationships more than you might imagine. So the thing that matters most is your soul. The thing that matters most is your soul. And I want you to have that statement in your mind as you go throughout your day. You know, the thing that matters most is my soul. It's like just to bring into consciousness are the decisions I'm making now in alignment with that soul or am I putting my soul first in this situation? 
in this work choice, in my home, in my life as a whole? Am I acting like my soul is the thing that matters most? And I remember uh, talking about in a recent <laughs> episode about, you know, we, we were talking about, and Sean, I'm trying to remember the name. I think it was uh, Solitude as a Scheduled Spiritual Practice, right? Yep, yep absolutely. Yep. We were talking about how you schedule a Manny Petty, <laughs> you schedule right, right. a haircut, <laughs> but you don't schedule time for your soul work. And so today is taking that idea deeper. Yeah. Maybe we ought to put a link to the show notes uh, or a link to that in the show notes. Yep, absolutely. Just in case, yeah, just in case people mention that one, because, of course, everything on the channel and on the show is to help you grow, prosper and evolve. Right. Yeah. And there, what I love is that there is a through line. Like, and if you're really working with these ideas, which, you know, for me, I've been a long time listener. And now that yes. I'm working on it, like it's taking me deeper than I ever thought. Yes. Than I had, than I've ever gone before in my, in my adult life. And it's, it's really, I, I love the progression of, you know, we went from uh, respect yourself and your boundaries, which I've been doing mm -hmm. a lot of work around and with, Good. um, you know, and then getting into that scheduling, the scheduling, you, you know, uh, well, sorry, what was it? Solitude <laughs> is a scheduled right. spiritual, spiritual practice. practice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's really, uh, hugely impactful. And I, it's, I, well, I, right. I, I know and you're all experiencing it too. So. Yes. And aren't you, I mean, you're working on several things, you know, that's that walk in the morning you're doing that exercise you're doing, you know, it just yeah, sounded huge. like, I mean, a lot of that came out of that. Right. I say, I mean, I've struggled, you know, with my weight, my whole entire life and, and being active and something in the work that, that I've been doing here, all of a sudden something just clicked and something snapped and I was mm -hmm. like, okay, this is it. I'm doing it. Like, you yeah, know, for 47 years old and it's now it's, it's time. I'm either going to do this now or, mm -hmm. you know, who knows what kind of health problems I could, you know, have later, uh, you know, as I <laughs> get older. Right. Oh, oh, you're, 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 uh, you're telling the truth. Now, yeah. if you were, if we were in, in, in the South in a black church, somebody would say, make it plain <laughs> and make it plain. And, and, and you're saying the truth. If we do not do now, no matter what age we are, you can start where you are. But if we do not make good choices now down the road, we are going to experience all kinds of things we don't want. When you're talking about the body and health, absolutely. And what I love about that, Sean, is that it came out of your soul journey because it always does. Yeah. You, you can try to make yourself work out. And if you're just trying to make yourself work out because you're supposed to, not because it's part of your next spiritual step, it is always going to be a struggle. But because you got to a place in your journey where you knew it was time, it's like, yes, you still have to choose to do it every day, but I feel the the intention. I feel the energy. The choice is so the, much easier. At first, yes. what, you know, it is. It just really is. Like. I never would have thought that I'd be at a place in my life where every single day without fail, I'd be getting up at four 30 and getting to the gym at five 30, <laughs> you know, and, uh, yeah, I'm, you're, I, you're and the, I'm in, I'm in week three. I'm halfway through week three, you know, awesome. I miss, I've only missed one day. Um, oh, that's awesome. But yeah, so it's, yeah. And, but the, the, and I think this is the first time in my life it's ever stemmed out of my spiritual work. Whereas I, before it's always been like, I gotta do this. Like, you know, I don't, you know, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. I got to do it. Yeah. Instead of I want to do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Ricky Byers has a song. I think it's uh, the spirit of God is upon me. Mm, we should it. put that in the show notes I'll too, where she too. says, yep. I used to think that I had to, I used to think that I should. Scripture told me I had to be good. And now yeah. I love because I want to. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So we, you should change that. Now I work out because I want oh, to. Yeah. <laughs> I work out because I'm free. Right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but but friends, this is what we're talking about. It's not like what we're talking about the thing that matters most being your soul that we're thinking you're going to just sit around and pray all day. Uh, <laughs> right. What the the idea is that we're putting our soul journey first, meaning. We want to live a spiritual life. We want to live a life of peace, you know, a life that is on purpose. And when you begin to listen at those deep levels, you do begin to grow. You do begin to prosper and evolve. And, you know, it's, it's impacted my physical journey too, Sean. It's, it's interesting. Um, you know, uh, I can't remember if I've talked about it on the show or not, but I am planning on competing in jujitsu this summer. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, okay. And, <laughs> and so I, I recently met with a new coach, a female that just won a gold medal, 
uh, in a uh, jujitsu competition. She's amazing. And she's, you know, a career trainer and competitor. I mean, she's amazing, young and fit. And I was really guided to talk to her about my next steps. I, I've met your mother, coach. We're friends. I'll probably go back to working with him more again. And I may even work with both of them. But I know that to take my next steps in my jujitsu journey, I have to have a different kind of coach. And that arose out of, you know, this desire in my soul. And so it's not like, well, I have a desire to beat somebody. It's really about developing myself. It's not about beating someone else not about winning. and winning. It's not yeah. about winning. It's about developing myself to the point that, number one, I can protect myself. Number two, I'm in the best physical condition that I've been in in 20 years. Awesome. Uh, you know, uh, number three, I learn every time I go about myself, about how I'm trying to develop as a human being. But it all comes from my soul journey. Yeah. Amen. So think yeah. about that, friends. Your soul is the thing that matters most. Yes. The thing that matters most is your soul. Everything else in your life arises out of that. And, you know, I've had some recent uh, friendships where, you know, I was in a real different place as the people I was seeking to be friends with. And it just, it just didn't work because I live my life based on my soul and my soul's journey, not on what I want or what I can buy or what I can do. It's really all of my choices are arising out of my soul journey. So think about that. Am I putting the thing that matters most first in my life? And here, here's a way to check that. I, I love practical ideas for how do I check in with myself? Because, friends, sometimes we're in denial about ourselves and our own behavior. <laughs> so here, here's, a, here's a question or, or here's an example of how you can check yourself. One, I want you to look at your calendar and in a given day and look at how much time in a day do you spend on your soul work. Are you listening to spiritual things? Are you meditating? Are you writing in your intention journal? Are you attending recovery meetings? Are you involved in a church or spiritual community? Are you taking time to be quiet and to pray, to journal, to learn? All of these are simple, simple ways to begin to move forward on your spiritual journey. Are you reading spiritual texts or books? Are you surrounding yourself with the, the things of the spiritual? And uh, it was interesting today that Sean and I always end up talking about <laughs> whatever the show is going to be about. And we were discussing uh, my office because I've recently made some changes in my office. I, uh, I just have a dear friend who's a, a painter, and uh, he did some beautiful work in here, and he added a little uh, shelf behind my desk. And it was really interesting choosing what to put behind my desk because they, I wanted it to be useful, but I also wanted it to be inspiring. And so the many things that are that are behind me here, my crystal, there's even uh, something called a Tibetan prayer wheel. I'll grab that. This Tibetan prayer wheel is uh, really, really beautiful. It it contains in it written prayers of mine and prayers. Uh, actually, Tibetan prayers. If you ever watch anything about Tibet, you'll see people, you know, climbing up the mountain and spinning this, and this is, you know, carrying the prayers up. And this always inspires me. And it, it was interesting that before I changed my office around, I had it, but it was kind of hidden back in in stuff. And it it just it's so ancient and so beautiful. And this piece was actually made in Nepal. Um, it's so ancient and so beautiful that every time I see it, it reminds me to connect with the spiritual. So it's a little thing, you know, but it, it reminds me to stay focused on the thing that matters most. And, and virtually everything behind me here, I've got, you know, uh, ash or vibhuti that 
which is ash that Sai Baba manifested from his hand. I have a shell that reminds me to be receptive. I have antlers that remind me to go to the higher knowledge. So just, just think about that. Now you may have like a white stone. Many people in unity have experienced that white stone ceremony, you know, with their word for the year, but think about what are, Sean, go ahead. Cause I remember you said you had yours. I do. Yeah. I, do, I think I'm, there was an episode recently where you were talking about your white stone and I always have mine every year. I keep it sitting yeah. right on my desk. So mine was this year believe so i have that here i have a couple nice. things here i have nice. my daily word um you know that i go through and uh, every day and i actually recently listened to greg barrett reverend greg barrett uh, yes. he was talking about how his father would read the daily word because he was like sometimes we take in that we take this like daily word and we read it and we just read it like it's something else we got to do in the day but he's like the way mm -hmm. my father would read the daily word he's he would read a sentence and he would close his eyes and repeat the sentence so I started doing it that way just the other day after I heard him say that. And I thought, cause I, I take my time with it usually in highlight and stuff, but yeah, to, that was, a, there was a definite difference there in reading it sentence by sentence. Of course exactly. I have my Oh, your intentions, intentions journal. journal. <laughs> I'll pay you later right for that. Per Sean. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. It's my, uh... <laughs> yeah. That's, that's uh, oh, and you know, something, my... something else you gave me. Yeah. Oh, what else? Oh, that little the bag. Grow, prosper, grow, prosper, revolve bag. Evolve. And I keep my little, my little love stone next, next. So yeah. So I totally mm -hmm. am a big believer in that too, being surrounded and supported. And, you know, I sit here looking in this direction, <laughs> you know, a good number of hours in the day. So exactly. to have all of that exactly. in front of me is, you know. Well, that's, and that's really interesting too. There's, there's also, you know, several crystals that you can get that help, help, um, with, uh, changing the energy of the computer and things like that. I've helped a lot of people in an office setting or people that have stressful workplaces choose different crystals that can really help shift the energy of your workspace and take in negativity so that, you know, you're not taking it in. So all these things are practices. It's interesting because I wasn't even going to talk at all about this until this morning. And it was like, you know, we all need really simple things to remind us of the spiritual. You know, most of us don't have big crosses in our homes anymore or big family Bibles. Like, you know, in the South, when, when you, where we grew up in Georgia, we, everybody had a wooden stand that held the family Bible that was, I don't know, I don't know, four to six inches thick, literally. Uh, I have it in there. <laughs> I have the, I actually have three family Bibles. I'm not sure why. Everybody thinks because I'm the minister, I need all the family Bibles. I'm, I, and I want to say you read one. But anyway, in in the in in Georgia, we would all have this wood. It was like this little platform that the Bible was always open, you know, in our home. Well, most of us now don't live like that. We, you know, the way we operate in our homes is very different. A lot of us don't even have dining tables anymore either, where we would sit and say a blessing as a family. So. And if you didn't grow up spiritual, you didn't have any of that. So I think it's important to talk about some of these things just in, you know, just to get it into our consciousness. Like, what things are you doing that are reminding you of the thing that matters most? Because what most of us are doing, and I love that you listen, by the way, on your device, is we have our phones or we have our computers and we're plugged in all the time. And so we want to find ways to to bring our minds, to bring our souls, to bring our bodies in alignment with this idea that it is my soul. The thing that matters most is my soul. And so we just want visual reminders of that because it will help you, as Sean said, be more mindful. If you have a spiritual reading, you don't have to you know, like race through it because you're in a hurry. If you don't have time to read it, just read one sentence and take that one sentence deeply all day long. You don't have to read every word of the daily word. Read the affirmation and take that with you all day long. Repeat it as you drive. Repeat it if you're on the subway. Repeat it as you are at lunch. Uh, as our friend that Sean mentioned, Karen, who, who listens to the show during lunch, you know, let that time be a time of renewal for you rather than just, well, let's go get through lunch and now I've got to slam back into work. It's like we just want to give it the time it deserves. 
um, there was a program that that helped me with this idea years ago, a, a man named David Owen Ritz, and he's a minister in Centers for Spiritual Living. He wrote a great program uh, called Keys to the Kingdom, and it's a seven-week prosperity program, I've, and I've taught it many, many times, and I employ the practices, uh, frankly, still today for the most part. And one of the things he talks about in there is that we talk about tithing 10% of our money to where we receive our spiritual food, but are we tithing to ourselves in terms of our spiritual work? In other words, are we taking enough time every day to, um, to spend on our spiritual work? And so during the, the seven week course, what I would have people do is spend an hour and a half on their spiritual work every day. And people would say, my goodness, an hour and a half. And, you know, that just sounded like acres of time. Like, like I, I, I can't imagine spending an hour and a half. And I, and so I said, well, they said, what, what would I do? I said, well, you could read a spiritual book. You could listen to a spiritual lesson online. You could pray. You could journal. You could go out in your backyard at night or on your back deck, or on your front porch, or on your stoop, whatever, listen to the night sounds. See if spirit is speaking to you through that. And so people just needed ideas for ways, you know, to put their spiritual work first, because they'd never been told that was a good idea. And what they discovered, as they began tithing, as they began putting their spiritual work first, life began to shift into the positive. So think about that, friends. Everything you do comes from your relationship with God. It was interesting. Uh, this has happened a couple times recently when I've gotten too hungry. <laughs> I've got to watch that. Um, I had a big day yesterday, and and it was it was interesting with my son because I'd picked him up, and he was running late, and I was tired and I got home and he, he said, mama, are you okay? I said, you know what? I have to eat. I'm so sorry. Was I snippy? He was like, well, you just didn't seem like yourself. I said, you know what? I need to eat and take a deep breath. So my own son will tell me if I'm, if I'm off track, if I, I know I'm not in alignment spiritually. And sometimes eating is, <laughs> is a part of that, believe it or not, taking care of myself and my soul. Uh, there's a, a phrase I learned in the 12 steps many years ago in my al group that said, don't, that said, uh, uh, learn the word halt, halt, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. If you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, do not move forward. Do not pass go. Do not call somebody, you know? And it was like, wow, I had to take care of myself and my soul because I was hungry. I w and I was tired. I was angry or lonely, but I was I was not coming across in the spiritual way I normally do. So I said, oh, I'm so sorry. You're right. <laughs> I need to stop. I need to eat. And I made a beautiful food. That that was so fun to make beautiful food. I make a, um, I call it, I don't know, it's like something like sticky Asian chicken or something like that. It's, it's a great, great dish. And I always use fresh herbs from my herb garden and everything. And it's just delicious. And afterwards... You could tell, and he he was really hungry as well. We felt like different people, and we we connected and had a hug. I said, "I'm sorry if I was cranky." And so, so the thing that matters most, you know, is your soul. Everything you do comes from your relationship with God, and so if you're not spending time on your relationship with God, chances are it's going to affect all your relationships. And then, you know, we talked also recently, I had a little bit more intense show. I, I actually had to do some personal work after it because I started questioning some of the content. It was, it felt like a risk for me. It was a show called The Problem of Evil. And it was talking about all the images and things we take in. And I am, you know, I am always seeking to elevate my consciousness. And the more elevated it becomes, the more uh, I limit <laughs> the type of images that I want to take in. I'm super concerned about the sexualization of our, our, of America, really, of the world, the sexualization of all of us. 
And because I believe we're meant to first be spiritual beings, we're also sexual beings. But the the point that we are sexualized, I, I don't want to watch another show about a woman being victimized or kidnapped or raped and all the all these images that you see all the time. So I'm always seeking to elevate my life experience. I want to focus on the spiritual and things of beauty and things that bring me peace and joy and love and light. And those things are negative energy. The things that are negative, I don't want to bring those in. That said, we all have negativity within us that we have to deal with and heal. And that's what our next show is going to be about, about healing our trauma. But first we have to put our soul first. If we put relationships first, if we put money first, even our families above our spiritual, we're going to have other problems. And if we put our spiritual first, our soul first, our spiritual work, the thing that matters most, if we put that first, our relationship with God, everything else is enhanced. As Sean and I were saying right now, he and I are working on our physical journeys, but it arises out of the work of the soul. So my friends, I love you. I bless you. I hope you can uh, take a look at this and you might be absolutely putting your soul first. I know for me, there's always room for improvement. So as I'm talking to you, I'm always talking to myself and looking at, could I spend more time in my spiritual work? Like this morning before the podcast, I did a little bit longer meditation. I breathed a little bit more deeply. I was uh, conscious in coming into my day and I just feel at peace. I feel in the flow. I love sharing. And I can tell that this morning by how I feel that I have put my spiritual work first. I have put my soul first. So this is my hope for you, friends, that you feel this sense of peace, this sense of growth and development, and that you see the benefit to living a spiritual life. It affects everything for the better. So my hope for you this week, uh, my friends, is to remember this, to bring to mind, am I, am, I doing, am I doing my spiritual work? Like, am I focusing on the thing that matters most or where is my focus? And, and the good news is, if you don't do it today, you can start now. You can start tomorrow. You can start whenever you're ready to do the thing that matters most, right? The work of your soul. So I thank you for joining me today. As always, I just feel honored and blessed, as we said earlier, to support your journey. I know Sean feels the same. And we thank you for following us on social media. And thank you again for your support financially of the show. It keeps us on the air. And we're happy and honored to support your journey. So look forward to seeing you next week. And blessings on the journey, dear friends. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Experience of the Soul podcast with Cynthia Alice Anderson, helping you grow, prosper, and evolve. This podcast is made possible because of listeners and viewers just like you. If you would like to support the podcast with your tax-deductible contribution on an ongoing basis or through a one-time gift, head on over to experienceofthesoul.com slash support. The Experience of the Soul podcast is copyright 2024, Cynthia Alice Anderson, all rights reserved, and is produced by Sean Kilgore. A production of The Soul Works Group, Incorporated.